Welcome back, Edison. Hey, I just wanted to make a quick video here to show you some of the things that you missed while we are gone. Uh, tonight, when you watch this, I'd like for you to do this before you do the review guide. Um, the review guide, if you could just have that done by uh, Thursday, that would be great. If you have any questions tomorrow on the review guide, just let me know. And I'm more than willing to help you out or meet with you either before, after school, or during lunch. I really want to make sure that you're well prepared for the test. So we're going to talk about a couple of concepts from last week. Our schedule from last week was we spent uh, Monday, Tuesday, and uh, Monday and Tuesday going over um, simplifying fractions. So we're going to go over that first. Um, then I'm going to talk about some of the review guide concepts that I want you to know for sure. And then lastly, we're going to talk about uh, what we talked about on Monday. So first off, simplifying fractions. So when we look at fractions, and you might already know some of this information. Um, we'll just go over it one more time here. If you see the fraction 9 twelfths, you're asking yourself, what factor can I pull out of both of these numbers, out of 9 and out of 12? Well, in this case, I know that 9 and 12 are both multiples of 3. So I'm going to divide both of these numbers by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now, it's reduced down as far as it can go. How do I know that it's all the way done? Well, there's an easy way to help you or guide you most of the time. I say most of the time because it doesn't happen every single time, but a majority of the time. When you see one of the numbers that is prime, in this case, 3 is a prime number, that's typically a sign that you've reduced it as far as you can. Not always, but almost all the time. Now, in this case, I ask myself, can I divide any number uh, 3 and 4 by the same number and have it equal a whole number. Well, the only factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4, and I can't do 3 divided by 2, that wouldn't be a whole number, or 3 divided by 4, that would be a fraction. So this is as low as it can go. Um, if I tried some others, let's see if I did 10 twentieths, 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 excuse me, um, I could look at this and say my clue is that they both end with 0. So I could divide both of these numbers by 10 because they're both multiples of 10 to reduce it down to 1 half. Okay. Um, you could even go online and find some practice problems if you'd like, or I could supply you with some. You'll have some in the review guide that you can simplify. Um, let's try a couple other ones. I'll write some problems down, and then I'd like for you to solve them. Okay, take a minute to solve these three problems here. You can just do that on a scratch piece of paper. And then you can press pause, and when you think you're ready to go, you can press play and check your work to see if you're correct. Okay, the answers are in, and the answers are 3 sevenths, 5 sevenths, and 1 fifth. You can practice some of these problems on your own, um, and feel free to check with, in with me tomorrow to see uh, how these problems go. One more thing that we need to talk about is the difference between quantitative and qualitative data. When we look at quantitative data, we use numbers. So I'm going to put the number sign here to describe our situation. Suppose that we had a graph, and this graph, as you saw in the test, tracked the score of Michigan games over a period of time. Now, this would be like a line graph um, with the number of years on the bottom and then the score on the side, the title up top with our x axis and y axis labeled quantitative observation, I might say the maximum in 2003, in 2003, was 45 points. Okay. Notice how I use numbers in my description. I might say the minimum was 5 in 2014. Okay. Um, I could make an observation about the range, the median, the mean. Those would all be quantitative observations. Now, qualitative, on the other hand, is a little bit different because it just uses words. I like to point out the L is language, the N is numbers. So it looks at this data. If we look at the same graph, it might say, over a period of time, the score decreases. Did I use any numbers? No, I did not. Did I talk about the general consensus about what the graph looks like? Yes. So just use words for qualitative for qualitative information. I don't know if a glitch happened there or not, but um, use words for quali qualitative and you'll be all set. Lastly, um, yesterday we talked about 
uh, different information, how we look at exponents. We talked about how if we look at a problem like 10 squared, this right here, the 10 is the base of our problem, and then the 2 is the exponent. Now what the exponent tells us, so when we have 10 squared, that means we multiply the base number however many times the exponent is. So we have 10 too, so 10 times 10. Please do not send me to my grave by saying 10 plus 10. This means that we multiply this number by itself this number of times. So if we look at if we look at 7 to the 5th, that's 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. Now on your calculator, you can see that it's um, if you type in for 7 to the 5th, you're going to type in the number 7. And then actually directly to the left, so hopefully you have your calculator with you, is a little arrow. And you type in the arrow, and then you type 5. Now what that will look like on your calculator your calculator will look like this. And all you do is press enter, and once you enter that, 7 to the 5th power, it will pop up your answer. You never need to type in your calculator 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. You never need to do that. This is a much simpler way to do that. Okay. The last thing that I want to mention is about exponential notation. It's really important to know that when we see problems like 3 times 10 to the second power, we don't first multiply the 10 and the, the 3 and the 10. We save that until the end. The first part that we do is we multiply out the exponent, so 10 to the second power. So that would be 3 times 100, because 10 to the second power is 100. Now 3 times 100 is 300. Okay. Eventually, we're going to get into problems where we're looking at 4.689 times 10 to the negative 7th. You're going to use scientific notation to uh, uncover what this might be. Okay. And really, this just shows the placeholders that will come beforehand. Okay. We haven't really talked about this yet, so don't worry about that. I hope this helps, and if you have any questions on either the review guide or any of this material, please feel free to stop by, and I'd love to help you and answer any questions that you have. Thanks so much, and welcome back from the DR.